Good evening. I am ready with all the roundings and sandings and I am about now to to make the comp compartment ready which has to separate to divide this in two. One part will be for the cooking, one part will be for the drawers. I uh, took the liberty already in to take to uh, remove the paint which was on the side. There was some paint on this, and here where the gluing has to be done. The front has to be reduced. It has to be sawn sawn away, and here too. What we do in order to estimate its uh, height is very simple. You place it into the position where it more or less has to be. In this case it is here. More or less. Might be a little bit more there, or a little bit more there. I'm not sure yet where to place. I will put the pot into place in order to know what the distances will be and I want to be sure that the alcohol stove is not too close to this even though I'm going to coat this with uh, alu sheet aluminium aluminium, uh, very thin aluminium uh, and alcohol stoves either, they don't give too much of heat still uh, we want to keep it on the safe side in order to know the height of this piece of plywood I place it into place into its place where it has to be and I mark like this I use a very sharp pencil and I make sure that the way how you mark is done properly and I mark here and the next step is I transfer that line to one of the sides which I did here and I take a tape measure let me see. Ah, there is. There it is. <clears throat> I take a tape measure and I measure how much that is. In this case, it is 28, 28 centimeters and eight and a half millimeters. And what I do is, I exactly here. I already verified if this is 90 degrees, and my square is says this is 90 degrees. Yes, <clears throat> it is 90 degrees, says the square. <clears throat> what I do is, I measure those 28 centimeters, 28 millimeters. On the one side, I do it here too, on both sides. So I measure it here, 20, I measure, oh, it's 28 centimeters, 20 and 8 and a half millimeters. And I, then I do exactly the same on the other side. Once I did that, I double check with a square and then connect those lines. Once I connected those lines, as I'm going to saw this not on a table saw, I'm going to saw it by hand. Then I connect those lines. I transfer them to the back side of the plywood. I transfer those lines with the help of a square. How you call this? Uh, 90 degree angle. I transfer that line to the back and then once again I double check with the square if those lines are marked well and I see I did it very accurately and I connect those two lines now I have on both sides the line which I have to use as a reference to saw I'm going to saw at this this side at this side of the line by hand. And then once we did that we can sand it uh, sand it with a sanding block. 
because I'm not going to use a plane because that it's a very hard kind of plywood because they use uh, I think this is uh, watertight uh, watertight glue this is a uh, watertight multiplex uh, plywood and it ruins your plane that's why I'm not going to going to try to sand to to saw as accurately as possible and then sand it till I am at the line and this, then once we did that we can place it ba back and estimate how much we have to saw from the front I will saw it now if you have the luck of having a, a table saw then it is of course a plus And I use a very fine saw like this one, not uh, not the average hand saw you you would have. Then I do it from both sides. The the sawing. It would be recommended to saw from both sides because like that you will definitely have more um, accuracy as well. If you saw from both sides there's more chance that um, you will end up with a good result. Oh, let me see. Something fall here. the finger like this because then I have more control in sewing and I keep the elbow next to my my hips
and it's that's it now the next step is to place this thing onto a straight plank something straight we will look for that straight and broad like for example this plank that's it would do and where we saw what we are going to do is sand it a little bit with the sanding block check and decide whether it is enough or not For the moment, that's enough. And then I just, uh, like, because of curiosity, I will have a look how it looks like. And yes, oh my, I'm very surprised. It is level, but really, really level, level. I guess I'm lucky. It's really level, perfectly level. That's okay, we can sand it more after before we will sand the whole assembly. We can, we, we can sand it before varnishing. We will have to sand everything before varnishing anyways. So the perfection of sanding we can do later. And now we can estimate how wide this panel has to be. We have to cut away a little bit. It sticks out a little bit here. And I want it to be level. As you can see, there is here sticking out. That's for the front, which will be installed with a. I think it's in English, it's called a hinge. I found an old hinge, which I recuperated from. I uh, scavenged it from somewhere and I kept it. Fortunately, so uh, the hinge will be installed here for the front lid, and so we need to cut away this so that it will be level with those two. Um, there are several ways how to know this, and I think I will trace a line first uh, for reference. Then the second question comes up is. Do would we paint this wi uh, white in the same color as this because we don't like the plywood It's not very beautiful because this is a vintage cooking box a bit in the style of 1900 or a Even in the 50s they had them still 40s 50s and The last ones by the way and this this doesn't make it very nice looking what we can do is either paint it or we could glue a piece of oak onto the plywood. If we are going to piece uh, to glue some oak on this, which we can carve afterwards, or we could um, use the same material as we use for the strips, the Meranti or uh, Lawang, as you call it probably in the, US, in the United States, for example, 
Lawang comes from the Philippines, tropical wood. Uh, if we are going to to glue this strip of oak or, or Melanti Lawang tropical wood, then we need to keep this in our um, plan because then you have to to cut away more of the plywood so I have to think about it shall I do this or shan't or not maybe um, maybe I shouldn't because I am running out of time I think I will just paint it to not complicate the drawers will be carved in that piece of oak. It will be very hard to be carved anyways because it's so narrow. So it would be the same width as the plywood. So it has no sense to, to put there the oak or the lawang. Lawang can be carved. It's not a carvable wood. It can be plain but not carved. Oak can, maple, cherry. So no, we are not going to put a piece of oak there because we are running out of time and we're not going to carve it anyway so what I do is I take a long straight edge stainless one and I place it into place and I trace a line This is at once also our reference line, so we know where the hinge has to come, till there and no further. Yeah, that's good to know that we have a reference now. And now we have this reference line, I place my plywood back into place in the way I want it to be and the reference line now is very useful in order to know till where it has to be cut away what I do is I just um, use the, the reference line we just traced here I don't know if you can see it and I copy that, I transfer that onto the ply, the site And I also, before doing that, I think I will get the cooking pot. So that I know more or less where it has to come. It comes more or less. Let me see. That's okay, like this. Yeah. It comes there. And then I remove the cooking pot. And then I trace the line. Okay, we trace that line and the same way we did with the other thing, we again measure just in case and I measure 21, 21 centimeters and three and a half millimeters and I do the same at the other side, I measure it out 21 21 and three and a half millimeters. And then I take my square and we trace the line. We trace the line and we can control it with the square. Yes, it's 90 degrees. Perfect. I'm very happy. Because it doesn't always turn out like that.
Now I transfer again the line which we just traced to the side and with the help of a square I transfer that line to the back And then, once we have that line at the back, we connect both, both of them. And just by curiosity, out of curiosity, I is check and it says it's okay. And now we cut that as well, like I just showed you in the other video. I will cut this and sand it, and then we will install it, glue it into place, and screw it into place. I will show you that in the next video. Thanks for watching.